Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our year two home learning. Here I am um, at my house. I have set up myself up a little um, home classroom. So I'm hoping that this video will um, allow me to talk to you and to give you the tasks that you need to do in your uh, maths lesson today. Um, but over the next uh, week or so, I plan to do a couple of these and I will save them to our U Class Teams page so that you can um, access those whenever you can at home. Because I know that um, you've probably got probably got families working at home as well and all needing to fight over the same computer. So I will record all of these um, live sessions that I do um, and then you can access them whenever you can get to a computer. Um, it won't just be uh, me you have to look at the whole time. I've set myself up um, with so I'll be able to show you what I'm doing as well um, and hopefully that will help um, you to see exactly what you can do at home as well. So without further ado, we will get started on our maths lesson and I will start to share my screen and I can show you exactly what to do in your maths lesson today. So hopefully what you'll be able to see now is a little whiteboard um, and I'm going to show you how we're going to warm up our mathematical brains this morning. You don't need a whiteboard for this session. Um, the only thing you will need is um, a pencil and some paper or something to write with. Um, and I've made myself some little digit cards. You'll need some digit cards for today. All I've done is I've used some scrap paper and cut it into little squares and I've written myself some numbers. So um, if you want to pause the video um, now, you can go and make yourself um, a little set of digit cards. You'll need about 20 or 30 numbers and we'll use them for the whole of the maths session today. So you need to go and do that now. And then I'll show you what we're going to use them for to warm up our maths brains. I'm going to start by making myself a tens and ones charts. We've used these in school before, where you write down how many tens there are and how many ones there are in a particular number. And yesterday we um, actually used 10p and 1p coins in our maths reasoning lesson. Um, I'm going to use the digit cards that um, I showed you earlier, and I'm going to pick a random number. And to warm up our mathematical brains, what we're going to do this morning is to work out how many tens are in that number and how many ones are in that number. So I'm going to pick a random number from the middle and I've got the number 82. Now what I need to think about is how many tens there are in 82 and how many ones there are. And I'm just going to write it into my tens and ones chart. If I think about that number 82, I know that it has eight tens. That's the 80 part that you can hear in the number. So I'm going to write my eight over here for 82. Then I need to think about how many ones there are. And in 82, this is my tens digit here, which means this is my ones digit. So in the number 82, I've got eight tens and two ones. And I'm just going to practice that a couple of times with some other numbers that I pick. And we should notice a pattern. So next I've chosen the number 96. And I'm going to rehearse that same um, phrase over again. In the number 96, I know that there are nine tens and six ones. So I'm going to enter that into my tens and ones chart. Nine tens and six ones. I'll do it again. I've got the number 44. Oh, tricky one, this one, because actually both of those digits is the same but I need to figure out which one is my tens digit and which one is my units or my ones digit. If I say the number 44, I can hear the 40 part and I can hear the four part, but which one of those is my tens? If I write my number in 44, it helps me to spot that there are four tens and four ones. Now we can make this even harder for ourselves to challenge our brains even more. If I rub out my tens and ones chart, I can do something we practiced way back at the beginning of year two um, with our um, partitioning. Now, for those of you that don't remember what partitioning is, um, I will make us a number. I've got some little place value cards here. And we looked at cards like this that we can pull apart to find the tens 
and the ones. We discovered that you didn't actually have to use these because if you listen carefully, you can actually hear it in the number. So if I pick my next number, I'm just going to write that down. It's 38. And I'm going to try and partition that number and put its tens over here and its ones over there. Now, I'm going to say that number really slowly. You should be able to hear the tens part and hear the ones part in 38. I slowed it right down there because over here, this number is a, the digit three, but it doesn't just mean three. In the number, it stands for 30, 38. So over here, I'm going to write 30. And over here, I'm not going to write 80 because the number is not 30, 80, it's 38. So on this side, I need to write eight. So I've partitioned my number 38 into its two separate parts, the 30 part and the 8 part for 38. And I can do that again and again. If I pick my next number, I've got 25. I'm going to write it down and partition it into its tens and its ones. Here are the tens, here are the ones. And if I say that number slowly, I can hear that it's 25. So over this side, this doesn't just stand for two, it's two tens, but that is in fact the number 20. 25 means that five goes over here. I'm just going to give you three numbers now. So on your paper um, with your pencil, can you have a go at partitioning the number 41? Draw little arrows underneath and write down what that four stands for and what the one part stands for in the number 41. Hopefully you should have heard it. It's a 40 and a one. My next number, ooh, is a tricky one you, because you can't really hear it quite well in the number 18. You really have to think about what each of those digits stands for because you can't hear when you say 18, you don't hear how many tens there are. So really think about this one ten, how much that would be. If you think about pulling apart the number 18, I can make it here with my place value cards. If I were to pull the number apart, this wouldn't just be a one here. It's a 10 and, oops, and an eight. So hopefully you manage to partition 18 into 10 and eight. Last one is the number 12. Again, you can't hear what this one ten is, but hopefully you can use what we just learned with the 18 to help you figure out what the, the one digit stands for in the number 12. Just as in eight, 18, it's a 10, not an eight this time. This time, in fact, we've got two ones instead. If you want to have a bit more of a practice at that, um, with the digit cards that you made earlier, you can pick um, any or all of your digit cards and practice partitioning those just to warm up your mathematical brains for this morning. Because we are learning something brand new in maths today. And we're going to start off with those place value cards that I showed you just now. I've made myself two numbers. If you read this number first, it's the number 73, and then read this number. It's the number 37. And what we're going to try and do today is compare these numbers. We've had a lot of practice at um, talking about which number is the largest number or which number is the smallest number. Um, but today we're actually going to start to compare these two numbers together and look at which one is larger than the other. Just have a think to yourself or tell somebody near to you which number um, of those is larger because they both have the same digits. They both have the digit seven and they both have the digit three. 
But I want to know which one is the larger number and how we know. We've practiced that how question in our maths reasoning lessons. How do you know which of these numbers is larger than the other? We can do it in a couple of ways. We can look at the tens digits and the ones digits. Now we practiced before drawing out the tens and ones using our deans, our tens and ones rods. I remind you what those look like. I brought some of those home too. So our tens and our ones. And we can draw out each of those numbers if we need to. We can think about how many tens they need and how many ones they need to make that number using deans. If I look at my tens and my ones in each of these numbers, I can see that the number 73 has seven tens, but the number 37 only has three tens. And I know that seven tens is more than three tens, so I can tell that the number 73 is larger. I could also think about it in terms of a hundred square. If you were to think about where these two numbers were on the hundred square, then my number 37 would be somewhere nearer the top and the number 73 would be somewhere nearer the bottom. I can also think about a number line. The number 37 would come before the number 73 on a number line as well. So there are lots of ways that I can figure out which of these is the smaller or larger number. And we've practiced those in maths lessons before. That isn't what we're doing today, although you do have to know that. Today, we're going to learn about a brand new mathematical sign. The sign looks like this. It's a rather unusual sign. Um, I'm going to use cubes to demonstrate to you what it means. I can show you that one cube fits in that space there. And I think probably about five cubes will fit in the space. Oh, yeah, look at that. Perfect. Will fit in the space over there. This sign here is read as is less than. And the way to remember that is because the smallest bit comes first. And we can say that one is less than five. And that sign in the middle means this at the bottom. It means is less than. So even without those words, I would read it like this. One is less than five. Is one less than five? Is that true? If you think about the number one and you think about the number five, one is indeed less than five. If I compare those two towers, my tower of one is less than, is smaller than my tower of five. And this is how we write it uh, in maths using this sign just here. Now, there are lots of numbers that I could put on either side of my is less than sign. Um, I could instead, oh, here's another cube, I could instead have the number two on this side. So my uh, math s sentence now says two is less than something. Can you think of a number that would go here? Two is less than something. You can pick any number you like, providing that two is less than it. I'm going to pick the number 25. Now, to make sure that it's true, we have to read it out loud and we would say two is less than 25. Have a think. Is that true? Is two less than 25? It is indeed. So I can actually take my cubes away entirely and I can write the number two there. So now I've written a mathematical statement. Two is less than 25. That's absolutely true. Two is less than 25. I can carry on and I can pick any numbers to go on either side of these two symbols. So um, I'm going to think of another number. I'm going to think of six to go over here. Can you think of a number that would go there? My statement says, read it with me, six, is less than something. Think of something that six is less than.
I've chosen that number there. Check it for me. Is it true? Read it out loud. Six is less than 12. Is six less than 12? Is my sentence correct? It is. Six is less than 12. It's six less than 12, actually. I'm going to pick a couple more numbers. Um, this time I'm going to put a number over here. And I want you to think of a number that would go there. So something is less than 34. Think of a number that would go over this side. Something is less than 34. You could pick over this side any number that is smaller than 34. Um, you could pick the number one. Obviously, that's smaller than 34. I want to be a little bit more adventurous than that, though. Um, I could pick, oh, I know. I could pick the number 33. 33 is also less than 34. I'm going to choose something from in between those numbers, and I want you to check it for me. Read my sentence out loud. You should have said 21 is less than 34. Is 21 less than 34? Is that right? It is. If you think about our number line, 21 would come before 34. This is what we are going to practice today. And we're going to use the digit cards that I spoke about earlier to help us. I'm going to switch my pen over and I'm going to grab my maths book because this is your do it task for today. Obviously, you don't have your maths books at home, but you can use um, any piece of paper um, and um, a pen or pencil. Um, please put a title at the top. So today I'm going to actually use that sign. Oh, if my pen works properly. There we go. Um, and I'm going to write less than to remind us that that is what this symbol means. I'm also going to put today's date in, so don't forget what day we're on. We're on the 13th of the 10th, 20. Then I'm going to grab myself those digit cards I was using earlier. And I'm going to pick two of these. Then I'm going to write them into my book using that less than sign. Here are the two that I've picked first. I've got this number, 82, and I've got this number, 18. And I'm going to write them into my maths book using that less than sign between them. Now, have a think, I've, I've actually ordered those. Now, if I wrote, wrote them down like this, 82 is less than 18, that wouldn't be true because 82 is not less than 18. So I can't actually write them round that way. So I'm going to swap them around because it's 18 that's the smaller number. So 18 is less than 82 is the statement that I'm going to have to write in my maths book. And I'm going to do it like this. 18, remembering one digit in one square, if you've got squared paper. Then I can just write that less than sign. I don't need to write the words as well because that's exactly what this sign means. So 18 is less than and my second number was 82. And now I've written a statement in my book that tells everybody 18 is less than 82. That's a true mathematical statement. 18 is less than 82. Then I'm going to put those cards back and I'll pick two other numbers. Have a think. Which way around do those two numbers go? Read my numbers. And think about which way round those would need to go. At the moment, I'd be, I would be writing 63 is less than 37. Is that true? Is 63 less than 37? Or should it go the other way around? Is 37 less than 63? I'll give you a moment to decide. I'm hoping that you've said 37 is the smaller number. So that must be the one that comes first. I'm going to write it underneath my first statement. 37 is less than 63. And then I can carry on and I can pick another two numbers. 
This is your do it task for today. As always, year two, I forgot to put my D in a circle, so I'll do that now. Um, my, my third set of numbers are 67 and 70. Which way round do I need to write those? Which one is the smaller number? If we're talking about less than, the smaller number is the one that has to come first. Those are actually in the right order. 67 is less than 70. So this is your do it task for today. And I want you to do that eight times. So in on your piece of paper or um, in a, a book, if you've made yourself a little home learning book, do this for me eight times. Pick two of your digit cards and write them in the correct order with that less than sign in between them. Have a careful look at which way around it goes. It's a little bit like a number seven tipped over. Um, less than goes this way. And make sure you write them in the correct order. So it says your smallest number is less than your larger number. Once you've done eight of those, you can give yourself an extra challenge. This is your twist it challenge. And you have to think a little bit more carefully about this because your twist it challenge is to create a less than string. Now, what I mean by that is to create a whole string of numbers with the less than sign in between each of them. So um, I'm going to pick um, a number. I'm going to start with um, 35. And then I'm going to put my less than sign. Now, I need to think of something that would go here. So 35 is less than, uh, well, I know 35 is less than 77. To make it a string and not just a pair of numbers, I'm going to do this and put that less than sign again. So now I've got 35 is less than 77, is less than, this time I'm comparing that number 77. So I've got to think about 77 and something that it is less than. 77 is less than 82. Then I'm going to put that less than sign again. And I can carry on and carry on, well, as long as I can think of numbers actually, and because now all I'm doing is comparing 82. 82 is less than something else. 82 is less than 94, is less than 99, is less than, I'm not going to go over this side here, I'm going to go on to my next line down. So 99 is less than 100. If you know numbers larger than 100, you could keep going. If you don't know numbers larger than 100, that's fine. That's all we have to go up to in year two. But I can I want to try and create as long a string as possible. I'll set you a challenge year two um, with this. Can you create a string, the longest string you possibly can think of? There is a way to do it if you think logically, but I'm not going to tell you that. Maybe you can tell me that in the chat um, after you've Done this lesson. So try and make the longest less than string that you possibly can. There is a way to, um, to, to make sure that you're doing it as long as you possibly can. I'm not going to tell you what that is though. I want you to tell me later on. This is then your math lesson for today. Um, let me know how you get on in the chat function. And I will put up another one of these tomorrow. So that's it from me for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I hope everything's going well at home and you're all um, safe and well. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Goodbye.